Hooray! Art with us! Are you a lover of Renaissance art and its great masters, such as Leonardo and Michelangelo? Get ready for a visual feast! You won't want to miss this journey of discovery into the world of game-changer Lucas Cranach the Elder. This trailblazer master artist broke the rules and left a lasting impact on the art world. Cranach's icon art can be summed up in four words, portraits, religious art, erotica, and technique. What makes Cranach immersive and mind-blowing? How did he become the wealthiest artist of his time? What was Cranach's relationship with Martin Luther? Who were his rivals? However, that's not the whole story. What is the truth behind the rumors that he married his first wife's sister and had a relationship with her mother? Why did Cranach paint Cupid complaining to Venus again and again? Are his works too sensual? His portraiture goes beyond mere realism to capture his subjects' personalities and emotions, while his biblical works are full of symbolism and metaphor. But Maverick Cranach wasn't afraid to push boundaries, and his provocative erotic work still sparked debate today. His technical skill was equally impressive, as he mastered various mediums, including oil painting, woodcuts, and engravings. He was admired for the innovative use of oil painting techniques, which allowed his paintings to have richer and more vivid colors, which was very modern for his time. His unique and awe-inspiring style and deep humanist influences challenged traditional norms. My name is Pavla, and welcome to my channel. If you're new, check out our channel by clicking our name below the video. If you like our content, subscribe and turn on notifications. Join me, an artist with a passion for sharing my knowledge, and my curious child on a journey into the amazing world of art. Let's discover, laugh, and learn together. We would love to get to know you better, so feel free to leave us a comment and say hi. And to add a bit of spice, stick around until the end for some slightly controversial Cranach jokes. So grab a paintbrush or cupid and enjoy. Lucas Cranach the Elder, born in 1472 in Germany, began his career as a court painter for the electors of Saxony. However, he quickly became an independent artist, establishing his own workshop in Wittenberg, where he produced some of his most famous works. Through his eye-catching art used bright colors, strong lines, and simple shapes. His paintings had a unique, almost graphic quality, with dramatic contrasts between light and dark. Cranach often chose subjects from mythology or religion, and his ability to capture the beauty and sensuality of women was particularly remarkable. What made Cranach stand out even more was his versatility. He created amazing prints with intricate designs and great attention to detail. His works were in high demand and widely distributed throughout Europe. He was especially skilled at making woodcuts that had bold lines and eye-catching compositions. Cranach created almost 20 versions of his oil painting, Cupid Complaining to Venus, with the earliest version dating back to 1527. The reason behind Cranach's repeated renderings of this particular scene is not entirely clear. It could be that the painting was highly sought after by his patrons, or that he was personally drawn to the subject matter. Alternatively, Cranach may have simply enjoyed exploring various interpretations of the composition and using it as as a way to experiment with his artistic techniques. He was not only a talented portrait painter, but also a master of narrative and allegorical painting. His skillful use of composition, symbolism, and narrative made his paintings not only beautiful but also intellectually stimulating. Law and Gospel is a powerful depiction of the contrast between the Old and New Testaments, while the Fountain of Youth uses rich symbolism to explore the concept of eternal life and the pursuit of youth. He also had a colorful personal life. He was married three times and had a total of 16 children, many of whom followed in his artistic footsteps. What's particularly interesting is that his second wife was actually the sister of his first wife, which raises some eyebrows. Furthermore, there are rumors that Cranach had a romantic relationship with the mother of his wife, but there's little concrete evidence to support this claim. His third marriage to Magdalena Schiff was also scandalous due to her previous engagement with another man when Cranach began courting her. Despite the controversy, Cranach and Magdalena's relationship endured, and some art historians speculate that she may have even been the model for some of his more sensual paintings. He was also a savvy businessman and a well-connected courtier. He and his wife were involved in various business ventures, including printing and trading colors. He maintained close ties with powerful patrons, such as the electors of Saxony, which helped him achieve both financial security and artistic freedom. Cranach's ability to adapt to changing political and social climates was a testament to his ingenuity and resourcefulness. And his legacy didn't end with his own artistic output. His son, Lucas Cranach the Younger, carried on the family business after his father's death, and other sons, including Hans and Jacob, also worked as painters and printmakers. So the Cranach family's influence on the art world was monumental. Cranach's relationship with Martin Luther was a close one, as the two were both active members of the St. Anne's Guild in Wittenberg and their lives became deeply intertwined. As a devout Protestant, 
Copernicus art often reflected his religious beliefs, which were strongly aligned with those of Luther. The men's friendship and collaboration were instrumental in shaping the course of the Reformation and the art world of their time. Luther held Cranach in high regard, both as an artist and as a person, and even referred to Cranach's second wife Barbara as the goddess of beauty and pearl among women. Luther also greatly admired Cranach's artistic talent and commissioned him to create several portraits for his family. He had some stiff competition, including the likes of Albrecht Durer, Hans Holbein the Younger, and Titian. These artists were known for their exceptional technical skills and innovative use of composition and subject matter, making their works highly coveted by patrons across Europe. Despite this competition, Cranach was able to establish himself as a successful artist in his own right, and his distinctive style and subjects set him apart from his peers. Check out the other artists in the description below. Why did Cranach prefer painting in oil? Because, because he, he thought, thought acrylics, acrylics were, were too watered down. down. Why did Cranach paint so many nudes? Because, because he, he was, was always looking for his best work. work. Why did Cranach paint so many nudes? Because, because he, he wanted, wanted to show that beauty is more than, than skin, skin deep. deep. Why did Cranach's wife hate his paintings? Because, because they, they always made her feel like she wasn't the center of his attention. <laughs> There are many different opinions and interpretations regarding the erotic elements in the works of Lucas Cranach the Elder. Some viewers may feel offended or uncomfortable, while others may see these elements as part of artistic expression and Cranach's individuality as an artist. Cranach was a popular artist among ruling elites and church leaders, so he may have had more freedom in what was allowed in his works. What do you think? Are his works too erotic? Yes or no? We're curious to hear your opinion, so please write in the comments. Despite these controversies, his bold and imaginative style, his innovative use of composition and color, and his ability to convey powerful messages through his work have made him one of the most celebrated artists of the Northern Renaissance. Explore the beauty and complexity of the remarkable Renaissance period in human history with our next video. Take, Take care, care with, with love. love.